Hello everyone. Welcome. We're gathering today, September 11th. So we're thinking a little bit about our world and maybe a very special way today, thinking of uh, ideas of peace and healing and harmony. So let's just keep that in mind as we, uh, as we pray today, this 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In today's Gospel, we hear the Pharisees disparage Jesus for welcoming sinners and eating with them. We, though we sin, are welcomed to this table where Jesus himself feeds us. So let us approach the altar with repentant hearts today, thankful for God's constant love and mercy. So Lord Jesus, you came to call us to the loving compassion of your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gathered sinners to yourself and showed them the way to salvation. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gather us to pray and to shower us with your mercy and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. And let us pray. So Almighty God and Father, our Creator and Guide, may we serve you with all our heart and know your forgiveness in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So the Gospel reading today is taken from the Gospel of Luke. It's a lengthy reading because it contains three parables. So, uh, you know, listen to them as they come along and we'll reflect on each one of them, what they have to do with the teaching that Jesus is trying to get across today uh, in this moment in his life. So it begins this way. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the 99 in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep that was lost. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need to repent. Or, what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I say to you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God, over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A man had two sons, and the younger son said to the father, Father, give me the share of your estate that, I'm, that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat the fill of the pods on which the swine fed but no one gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, 
dying of hunger. I will get up and I will go to my father and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired hands. So he got up and went back to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son and he embraced him and he kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father ordered the servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fatted calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life again. He was lost and had been found. Then the celebration began. Now the oldest son, who had been out in the field and on his way back, as he heard, the, heard as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. And the servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has a back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, the father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father, all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. The father said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come back to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. So that's one mouthful of parables for today. But let's look at all three of them. The first two are uh, rather simple. The last one, I'm only going to be speaking on really one part of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very uh, dense, very rich uh, parable, the parable of the prodigal son. But let's look at the first one very simple image that right? Jesus is uh, responding uh, we have to put that in perspective what he's responding to he's he's uh, penning or pulling together these parables uh, as a, a teaching for the Pharisees is that Jesus is very popular uh, among the outcasts people that are called sinners people that uh, others won't uh, associate with uh, the tax collectors who were considered traitors to Israel and really reviled by the people. So that's going on, that's the background. And in the midst of that, uh, the, the Pharisees are criticizing Jesus. You're talking to them, you're teaching them, and you're eating with them. And this eating with them is something we don't understand, but uh, eating in a Middle Eastern society means you are in communion with the other person, right? Everything is fine back and forth. You're okay with each other. That's an important thing to remember. Simply by eating with them, Jesus is absolving them of their sins. Right? That's, that's a, a healing moment. And the Pharisees don't like it. They're against it. So Jesus starts launching these parables at them. The first one, a shepherd has a hundred sheep and he loses one. Jesus is saying, isn't it obvious the good shepherd? He would go out and find that sheep. And when he finds the sheep, he'd put it on his shoulders and he'd come back home uh, and he'd call his friends together and they'd have a party because he found the sheep that was lost. Right? The image of sinfulness, not being someone who does something terrible. Jesus doesn't approach it that way. He looks at a person, he says, they're lost. They need to be found. That's God's job, 
finding them. That's what Jesus is doing. He's reaching out and finding them. The second image is a, an interesting one. A woman with 10 coins uh, loses one. And she goes through that house, she lights a lamp, uh, she uh, digs and cleans and sweeps. Uh, we, we just we kind of think of what a room would be like for someone like this in Jesus' day. It would be a room, not much more than a room, uh, no windows, it would be maybe an opening uh, toward the ceiling uh, to let a little bit of light in, but also to let some fresh air in. So when she's looking for this coin, it's dark in there. That's why she's lighting a, a lamp and she's looking around and she's sweeping, trying to get, get some motion. It's a dirt floor. Uh, so she's moving that dirt around to see if there's, there's the coin there. And this coin, uh, the way it's described here, is a drachma. And a drachma in that day was uh, approximately one day's wage. So uh, people being poor, obviously she's a poor, poor person, uh, losing that that one day's pay is very serious for the family. So she's out there looking for this, and she does find it. And she calls her friends in, and they have a little party. And then we move to the creme de la creme of all the parables, uh, the prodigal son. It can be called the loving father. It can be called the unforgiving brother. Uh, we can look at it really in different pathways, and each path we take is very, very rich in teaching. So let's just look at this, uh, really the relationship between the father and this young son. Okay. So again, we need to know a little bit about uh, what's going on there. For us, it's very common to receive inheritance before uh, a, f a family member, a mother or father die. Uh, often they leave whatever they decided they were going to leave with their children, they divide it and give it to them. Uh, it wasn't like that. It's a different society. Uh, it's a tribal society. Uh, people lived together. As they grew, they accumulated more land, um, more livestock, whatever it might be, and the family would run it, the family would till the soil. All that would be a family job. So, uh, you know, everybody had a right and way to 100% of everything, because that's how everybody lived. They lived there, but, uh, but on paper, he had the right to ask for his inheritance, and he did. And which meant half of everything, half the property, half the liquid wealth, half the, the servants, half the livestock, everything. And he liquidates everything, he gets a, a huge amount of money, and he runs off, and he's nuts. He just goes nuts with the money. He spends it on everything, and ends up he loses everything, he's very unwise, uh, he gets hit with a famine, he's really in dire straits. He ends up, you know, you know he's even left his country, he's left his religion, he's left his, his racial group. Uh, you know, he's, he's in a place where he's tending the pigs, right? So, so he's not part of Jewish society anymore. Uh, and he, that's when he decides, look what, look what I've come to. I'll go back and I'll present myself as a slave. If my father would take me back as a slave. And I, there's a little line in the story I just love, it's my favorite line. It says, while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him. I think that's such a beautiful line. Uh, you know, like, as if this father has been pining and just sitting, looking at the horizon, hoping one day to see his son. And when he does see him, he runs out to him. Uh, and embraces him and brings him back. And his father, the son says, I'm, I'm here just to be your slave. Take me as your slave. And doesn't want to hear any of that. And he begins doing something that all the people who are listening to this it was bad enough what the young son did. Right? And they all got that. But now what the father's doing is in a way worse. It's crazier than what the son did. And the father right away says, no, get the get the, the best clothing that we have, put it on him. So take off his rags and dress him back up like my son. Right? And he says, uh, uh, and then uh, put a ring on his finger. This is really important. By putting that ring on his finger, he's reinstating him as his son with all the rights and privileges of a son. And he could ask once again for 50% of everything that the father had. That would not go over well with the people who are listening. Right? What is this father doing? 
And then the father also says, put, put sandals on his feet. So he came barefoot like a slave. Slaves didn't wear shoes. So he comes like a slave. He said, no, this is no slave. This is my son. Put the sandals on him. And a great party begins. I'm going to just stop there. We won't look at the rest of it. Uh, but that, uh, that the other brother, if we do want to make it a little connection today, he's like the Pharisees. They're the ones who are judging Jesus because he's eating with sinners and tax collectors. Right? So the, the son is a lot like that. Jesus introduces that into the parable. But let's just end with that moment when the party starts. So what do we learn from all of this? We have all kinds of images there. Uh, that, that first image I, I think I mentioned was really that idea when we think of sin, uh, Jesus doesn't put it that way. He puts it as being lost. And that's something I think for all of us to understand in our judgment of ourselves and our judgments of others. Jesus is looking at how are you lost? How can I help you find your way again? Right? That's the dynamic. Right? It's not judgment, uh, uh, sitting here in St. Jean's, I'm looking at the confessionals all lined up, uh, and at the top there's a mention of the tribunal. Right? It's a place of judgment. Uh, and that's an old style of looking at it. It's much better to stick with Jesus. You know, People get lost, and God is trying so hard to get them back. So when we look at that, story of the, uh, of the uh, uh, lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. Jesus is teaching the Pharisees and us three things. First, we're so special in God's eyes that nothing can ever separate us from God's fatherly love. That's a challenge for us to believe. Because so often we make God into our image and likeness. We have to shift our way of thinking. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And this love flows through all the moments of our lives. God wants us to be safe. God values us as a treasure. Second, none of us should ever judge a brother or sister or ostracize them. We should eat with them. We should pull them back into the loving and healing community. And Jesus is witnessing that to us. <coughs> and lastly, third, we, each one of us, should throw a party every time someone returns to the community because our crazy God has successfully caught up with them and given them another chance at, at life. The beautiful images to follow today, simple ones, profound. So let's really listen today. So we'll gather our prayers now. So God is especially attentive to those who are in need so with great confidence, we address the Lord with our needs and the needs of all our brothers and sisters. So we pray for the church today. May we be models of mercy and forgiveness, providing witness to God's love for everyone who is repentant. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for anyone who has been given authority to enact, enforce, or apply the law. May they be guided by the ideals of justice and mercy in carrying out their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all who perished in the attacks on September 11, and for all who continue to suffer from the event. May they find peace and comfort and support. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for grandparents here and around the world that they may know the love and appreciation of their children and grandchildren. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those with estranged family members or friends who have fallen away. May they be ever ready to welcome them back into their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. 
and for the healing of the divisions in our nation, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the people of Ukraine and their battle. We pray for the people of Pakistan uh, who are fleeing the terrible floods that they're having there. We pray for the people in our own country who are fighting fires and drought throughout the country right now. So for all these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. So merciful Lord, grant us the grace to trust that you will never turn from us, no matter how far we wander. Hear us in your mercy and grant our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands, the praise and glory of God's name for our good and the good of all the church. So Lord, hear the prayers of your people and receive our gifts. May the worship of each one of us here bring salvation to all. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. With love we celebrate his death. With living faith we proclaim his resurrection. And with unwavering hope we await his return in glory. Now the saints and all the angels praise you forever and we say holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest lord you are holy indeed the fountain of all holiness let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended he took the cup again he gave you thanks and praise gave the cup to his disciples and said take this all of you and drink from it but this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant it will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven do this in memory of me the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. And may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. 
May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And we pray together now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And on this September 11th, let's also lift up a prayer for peace in our world, for healing, for harmony. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord, may the Eucharist you have given us influence our thoughts and actions, and may your Spirit guide and direct us in your way. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended now. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So have a good week, everyone, and uh, hopefully to maybe say a little prayer today and pray for uh, hope in our world, for that courageousness that all of us need to make this world a better place. Have a good week.